My brothers and sisters in Christ, as always, I hope this midweek news update finds you and your families happy, healthy, holy, and wise. We're back in ordinary time in the liturgical calendar, but that doesn't mean that things have slowed down in the life of the church. In fact, there's a lot going on, not just in terms of events, but of themes needing our attention in prayer. First of all, this week uh, is Christian Unity Week, something that the, the church and people of other Christian denominations observe every January, this year from January 18th through 25th. This year, the theme is, we saw the star in the east, and we came to worship him, of course, invoking the message of the Magi, as we just heard at uh, the Solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. Pope Francis himself has commented that as Christians of different backgrounds, we also are on pilgrimage uh, to, to finding Jesus that is the only source, the only place where we find full unity. Uh, but that the only way we come to that unity is like the Magi focusing on the star, uh, coming to Jesus, coming from afar over many obstacles and difficulties, we must keep our gaze locked on Jesus if unity is to be restored amongst Christians. Also, na uh, nationally, we're in the, the midst of the, the week uh, where we, we you know, pray very folk in a very focused way uh, upon the, the protection of the, the unborn. And so January 22nd in particular is the, the day of prayer for the legal protection of the unborn every year in observance of the anniversary of, of Roe v. Wade, uh, which for the first time in a long time, as the Supreme Court deliberates right now, there's a legitimate chance that it could be overturned. Uh, but this week, beginning today, uh, this video coming out, January 19th through 27th, is a novena. It's called Nine Days for Life, sponsored by the USCCB. You can register at respectlife.org, and it just simply gives tools for prayers, a little reflection video each day of how, for the next nine days, we can pray in a particular way for the legal protection of the unborn. Of course, on uh, always around the anniversary of Roe versus Wade, there's always the, the National March for Life in Washington, D.C. The USCCB also sponsors the Prayer Vigil for Life. Uh, you can go to their website to see more about not only the opening mass, the public holy hour uh, at the shrine, but also overnight due to pandemic concerns, there will be live-streamed holy hours throughout the night, each hour led by a different bishop, as the church is united in prayer for an end to injustice and the protection of unborn children. Also, here locally in the Archdiocese, we'll observe the day, uh, the day of prayer by activities on the morning of Saturday the 22nd. There will be uh, the praying before Planned Parenthood from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m., while here at the Co-Cathedral for the Archdiocese, there will be time of Eucharistic adoration from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m., concluded by Mass with Cardinal DiNardo at 11 a.m., as our local church prays for the, the protection of unborn children. I also will point out, uh, as we do this, that here in our parish, uh, my bulletin letter uh, for this Sunday, I encourage you to read it. Some may find it inflammatory. These topics we know have feelings running very intensely. But if there's one message I want to, for us to take away, it's that this should not be a political issue. It, it's intertwined with, with feelings of politics or ideology, but the question of abortion itself is a moral absolute. It is the intentional killing of an innocent life. That, by definition, is murder. A lot of people can agree with that while others will disagree. However, it's not enough for us just to put bumper stickers and like. We need to pray for an end to it, but we also need to realize that while the moral issue is absolute, that human life is messy. And therefore, we've got to do a better job of supporting life through all the spectrums, not just supporting the end to abortion, supporting women in crisis pregnancy, supporting young children, especially those who go through adoption, and all the ways, and compassionate for those who have been harmed, those who have suffered through abortions, whether mothers or children who survived the attempt. There are so many ways in which people have been affected, and we must be compassionate, pray for, and walk with. That key word of accompaniment, 
with those who have been impacted in this way. Together, may we all work for the legal protection of life and a complete pro-life ethic. This past Sunday, in observance of the, the annual Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, we had the annual commemoration mass at the Co-Cathedral with Cardinal DiNardo. This year, uh, I found the, the message of Father Houston Okoma, who's the, the homilist, did a wonderful job, and he talked about the reminder that as we hear the word justice thrown around so much, we must constantly seek out that one justice that's the only one that matters, and that's God's justice. We do this by growing in charity and seeking out Christ and advocating for our brothers and sisters. But Cardinal Donardo also at the end of Mass uh, brought up a, a poignant quote from uh, King's uh, letter from Birmingham Jail in 1963, and that was that in society today, all of us have a tendency to be thermometers. We can read the temperature of the current climate, but the gospel calls us to be thermostats, to regulate temperature, to change temperature. May we be voices of positive change in the gospel values in our country. Finally, here at the Co-Cathedral alone, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, January 20th at 7 p.m., we have our latest installment of fertur fer uh, fertur difficult to say fertility care class uh, for all those who have questions, not just on the Creighton model uh, or Creighton method uh, for fertility care, but also questions about those who struggle with infertility. Uh, who have different, you know, bioethics questions even. So many things of, uh, of caring for, for, for fertility for women and in married couples. This isn't just a women's issue. So please register at sacredhearthouston.org slash fertility care to register for tomorrow night's session. As I said, a lot going on, so I'll leave it at that this week. But as always, let's continue to keep one another in prayer. Prayer for our particular needs as well as these always present major issues of gravity in the church, in our nation, and in the world. We entrust them all to the care of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, whose heart always bleeds for love for us. O Sacred Heart of Jesus, we place all our trust in you. Amen.